For over four years, I've been using Procreate for my everyday work. And during this period, I've been constantly searching for new brushes and experimenting with them. I've been trying to find the best and most universal brushes for me. So today, I'm gonna show you my brush set, which I've created with all the knowledge I've got, and which totally makes my life easier. I've collected all the brushes I usually use in two folders. This one is Essential and this one is Render. The Essential brushes are the brushes I usually use all the time. They are Essential and I can actually draw using only these brushes and nothing else. The Render brushes are actually made to help me like on the finishing details and speeding up some of the process which I repeat all the time. So let's start with the essential folder. I also arrange the brushes in the order I usually use them. I usually start the artwork with the sketch, so the sketching brush will be on top. Then will be the line art, brushes for rendering, textured brushes maybe, and the stuff which I don't usually use but sometimes use. So it's located in the very bottom. So let me show you how I usually use the brushes and how each brush works. The first one is pencil brush. This is actually my remake of the pencil brush from Procreate, this one 6B pencil. This thing does the same. I've recreated the pencil brush from Procreate because I didn't want to put the Procreate brushes in my own brush pack, but it's basically almost the same. I usually start with the sketch and with this pencil brush and we're just gonna sketch a portrait really quick. Just a quick nice portrait. Making this layer more transparent, creating a new layer on top, making a bit better sketch here. And this is like very simple pencil brush for sketching. Next we have pencil for line art. It's the same texture, it's the same brush, but it works a bit different. If the sketch brush didn't have a lot of scale difference between like light touches and hard touches, then this pencil for line art acts differently. It is very strong already even with a very light touch and it gets thicker with a hard touch and this is a sketch. You see with the light touch it also gets very transparent and the brush for the line art doesn't do that. It's like hard and with the full color right away. So let's try this pencil for line art. I use uh, this brush when I want to have line art but I want it to be like super clean. Usually it happens when I look a lot at the artists who use a lot of textured brushes. I get really inspired by them. So for the times like this, I've created this line art brush with the texture of a pencil. Maybe it looks like ink, but I've called it pencil because it is made out of the pencil brush. As you can see, it has a lot of the scale variety. It can be very thin and very thick at the same time. I've also put a bit of stabilization in there, so if you have a shaky hands like me, this brush is gonna make a line art a bit easier for you. And this is how it looks up close, a bit of like texture everywhere. Also, if you will draw not like straight with the pencil book with a bit of angle, big angle, it's gonna transform into this thing brushy thing. The previous pencil brush does the same, but you can't see it quite clear. But with a line art brush in a contrast, you can really see the difference. It's like when you tilt your actual pencil and draw with the side of it, you get the same effect. And here is the final result for the line art pencil brush. Everything looks really nice I think and with some texture. Now let's try to do the same but with the usual line art brush which comes next and it is very thin in the beginning and it gets very thick with a lot of pressure so it has a lot of that variety. It has one problem though when you work with a big thickness you need to make it slow especially when you go out of the brush like this because if you will end the stroke fast you will get this ugly thing. I've been trying to get rid of it for a long time, but I can't. If you know the way to get rid of this thing, let me know, because I have no idea. The only thing that works is that 
like stop slowly. Make the end of the stroke slowly and then everything works just like it should. Other than that, it's very beautiful brush. Again, I've put some stabilization in there for my shaky hands. And drawing with this brush is like extremely satisfying. For the eyelashes, I usually go from the end to like the center to the root. This way the eyelashes look more clean from the edges to the roots. Not like this. Not as beautiful as these lashes. And here is the portrait made with the clean line art brush. And you can see the difference. This one is a bit more thick on the lines and this one is a bit more thin, but maybe it's just me today. But anyway, this one has texture, this one is like super soft and clean and everything. So these are all brushes I have considering the sketches and the line art. Just these three brushes is more than enough for me. Next we have a soft big brush. I absolutely love this brush and I would actually be able to draw just with this brush. It can be as small as this, like a dot, literally, and it can be as big as like infinity. Absolutely universal brush. What I like to do with this brush when I have a line art, when I have like a base color, I create a new layer on top of this base. This is gray base. Set it small to clipping mask and just taking a big soft brush some darker gray color as I like to start working in gray scale before coloring everything and just gonna start putting the shadows everywhere like this it creates very beautiful soft shadows so I absolutely love it and because it can become really small I can draw even small details with it and I slowly start rendering everything with this brush and I actually draw almost everything with this brush. 99% of all of my artworks are made with this, with just this brush, I think, mostly. Oh, what is also great about this big soft brush is that it's perfect for blending. For example, you've put some highlight here and you want to blend it with her cheeks. So you take the blending mode and take big soft brush and just blend with it. Draw in the same direction of the edge. Just blend, 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 blend. Make it bigger and just like this. Then we have medium brush. It's like a hard brush, but it has soft edges. Just a bit, because I don't like working with very hard brush, which is this one. Sometimes I need it, of course. Might be helpful, yeah, to make some lashes. This very hard brush. And just small details, which you want to have very sharp. But I prefer having just a bit of blur on the edges. It's not visible that much, but it makes a difference for me. With this medium brush, I also like to draw some small details here, like these details, like nose drills, all that tiny stuff. This brush is really great for that. And then we have like two texture brushes, which I also find essential. I kind of use them often. They're really great for the metals, for example. Like, let's give her some earring. A soft brush, put shadows, highlights. As you can see with the same soft brush, I told you I, I can use only this brush and will be absolutely fine. So it's kind of all right, but it doesn't look like metal. So I create the new layer on top with a clipping mask. Take this, one of these two texture brushes, which one is up to you. Set its mode to overlay and draw on this ring with light brush and with the dark brush also. And it gets this metal texture, which might be not very important for the earrings, but might be very important for like the shields and big metal stuff when you draw a warrior. And it also works if you want to like give anything a texture. Maybe you want to add some 
dirt on her face or mascara from crying is good for that too. Next one I have a braid sketch, which is not the actual rendered braid, but like the sketch. And I use it on the sketch face when I sketch the portrait or something. And I want to add braids, I want to plan them, I've put these braids here. One very important thing when you work with the brushes like braids, when you have clearly the pattern moving in some direction, in Procreate, maybe I'm not like fully into how it works, but for some reason, if you flip the canvas, the braids start working in the opposite direction. Like it should work like this, but it goes up. Also, if you will rotate the canvas, the brush is gonna break completely. Like it's the same braid, it's just in the wrong direction. So yes, this might be tricky. If you feel like the brush doesn't work correctly, just rotate the canvas, flip the canvas a bit, and it's probably because you're like <laughs> rotated it. And here I have also a couple of outlying brushes. These brushes are created to make some small details like earrings when you do the line art especially, like that, or maybe like anything with the lines like this. Yeah, something like that, just clean up after that a bit, all the lines you don't need. And they come in two thickness options, if you use very thin line art, in this case you'll need a thin border, and if you like a thick line art, you'll need a thick border, so here it is. And this is actually all the brushes I have in the essential folder. I can make a portrait using only these brushes, and I'll be completely fine. The render folder is made to make my life easier. And I use this pack on the later stages of the drawing, like the very final rendering when I have my portrait. Usually it also has hair. It's like almost everything is rendered, just we've left with some eyelashes, the skin texture, the lip texture, and basically all the stuff like that. So I create the new layer on top of my base, set its mode to clipping mask, and open my berry render folder. And the first brush we have here is skin texture. So this new layer on top, we set its blending mode to overlay, right here. Take the black color and this skin texture brush, this size might be enough, yeah, and just put it everywhere, just like this, on the base, everywhere. After that, I take a white color and again, put it everywhere. And I'm also lowering the opacity of this layer, just like this. Now we have a little grainy texture on this portrait, and it will give us this skin texture thing. Creating the new layer on top and setting its blending mode to overlay again. And clipping mask, taking the dark brown color, because the next thing we have is freckles. So we take them, some brush size, Let's try it and just put in it everywhere. Also, we can take a bigger brush and just a bit to have like a size diversity with this big soft eraser. I'm gonna erase stuff which is too extra. And here we have our beautiful randomized freckles. The next brush we have is hair. So first of all, you can not only use it for hair, but also for the eyebrows and eyelashes, if you like this kind of fluffy eyelashes. So let's take some dark brown color for the eyebrows, create a new layer. Let's make the drawing assist. It's gonna mirror stuff. Taking this hairbrush, not very big size, and let's try it. Yeah, maybe even smaller. And just like this. And nice! Five seconds and we have like an awesome eyebrows. Let's now take the black color and draw the eyelashes with it. Yay! Some cute fluffy eyelashes. Just like that. We have some hair on her face. And if you look closer here, you'll notice that I also have like hair thick brush. This is because it's 
thick so there are actually two hair brushes here this one should be i guess first but like meh okay so i'm gonna show you a way you can draw the hair with this brush but i usually draw them a bit differently just because i don't always have like a bald base which i need to put a hair on i usually draw everything like together but this is a way you can use this brush the thick one and just put some hair everywhere you want it makes those big chunks of hair kind of like very natural looking so this brush helps you to make big chunks to kind of plan your hairstyle let me just add a couple of details real quick So now I'd like to create a new layer on top. Clipping mask, render, hair thick, let's dry it. And a bit darker color for the shadows. And try defining the separate strands of hair. More transparent. And I've made this portrait using these brushes off camera just because it would take me ages to do it on camera. But this portrait was made fully with these brush sets. The new layer on top, clipping mask again. And with the lighter colors this time, let's do some in between. Okay, merging everything together, create a new layer on top, clipping mask taking a big soft brush from essential brushes some dark color and just creating the shadow let's now take very light color and this first hair brush and draw with it a bit on the light areas to create some highlights and same with purple very light purple and on highlights maybe we can add some separate hair with this hairbrush like this make her hairstyle a bit more interesting a bit more alive looking and maybe some highlights with a white color again a bit like untidy straights of hair everywhere Hey, much more fluffy and cute. Next we have a short hair. The short hair brush doesn't actually look like the short hair. It's like these blobs in one direction. But if you make them small and draw in the direction of the hair a bit like this. Pro pro probably something. I've never filled a bald head. Yeah, like this probably. Direction of the hair. So they're gonna look a lot like the short hair. You'll have to make some adjustments, of course. But they kind of work like the short hair. I use them when I need like a shaped side of the head. So I just put a bit of this short hair. You can try different colors, some like uh, lighter, some are darker to get more realistic result. But yeah, this is that brush. It works perfectly for like the sides. On the whole head it looks a bit weird but like okay maybe we can oh yeah yeah look at that i'm drawing and i can't get rid of the feeling that i'm drawing like the sims character for some reason and now with this hairstyle it's like um set out of 10. yeah i think the creators of steam would totally make this kind of hairstyle for some reason anyway like here it works perfectly for the sides. I think you can also give some unshaviness to your man with this short hair brush. So just try it. I don't know. So we finally got to the braids. Rendered braids. They are pretty simple to use. You just tap them on, create a new layer, select the color, select the size of your braid and just draw it. Just like this. You can cross them, so they, like, that's all. <laughs> They're really easy to use. These are fully rendered braids. 
they're very detailed of course i highly recommend you to edit them after you've put them there i would take this hair brush and with a lighter color i would add some stuff in center here and also like randomize the braids a bit like all the way everywhere but as you can see they don't have a lot of like contrast you can see the details but you feel like you need to finish it up a bit so for these cases i have braid detail transparent so you take this braid take the dark color draw it here as you can see it's transparent and then on the layer below you can fill it with any color you like just approximately so you can make it a bit more contrasty so yeah this is one that is a bit more time consuming but yeah i've left it just in case for those who like that stuff next one we have smoke brushes four smoke brushes so the first one is pretty simple it's one like you have a cigarette or the blown candle and you just draw like this it's kind of for example here is like the candle and this is, will be like a smoke coming from it it's for the very chill and relaxing smoke the next one is also for the chill smoke but it's as you can see it's more sharp and it's also very flexible if you draw with it slightly it will be very soft and thin brush and if you'll press on it it will be very thick and like saturated not saturated but like thick okay and the third one it's almost the same but it has some kind of like the other side just a bit again it can be very thin and light and it can be very thick thick and the last one is my favorite because you can make a swirls with it and it says just that here so basically when you use this second brush for example and move it like this yeah it's fun and everything and it's look nice that's right but when you use this brush and again move it from sides it creates some kind of this beautiful smoky waves it's for example when you've blown the candle and but you have some wind coming so you just like do this stuff this stuff and you can also use it as a usual smoke you can also use this brush for the magic for example you draw in one direction in the other direction like that like that then you can take the next star brush this one and put some stars on top and like blur them a bit it's kind of like magic you can't draw magic with it it's like not the best example but believe me it looks like magic when you need it to and talking about the stars yes it's the brush for the stars you can make like the stellar uh, sky with the stars this is how it looks with just white color but i highly recommend you to use different colors when you draw the sky with the stars after white take some yellow color for example and cover everything with yellow stars then like blue stars too and i also like adding some red stars like pink one everywhere then you with a soft big brush remove some of the stars everywhere and you can also duplicate them and blue and you get beautiful like very interesting star sky maybe a bit less of colorful stars but you get me just put there a little bit of diversity next one we have is chain so let's come back to this portrait and i'm gonna take some kind of this color the chain and we can draw the chains they are a bit wonky in the beginning and in the end and on the very strong turns as you can see it's kind of falling out of the chain but what can i do just keep that in mind so just draw a bit of outside of your form and delete the stuff you don't need like that and just fix a bit of here and there but still it is great chain brush i use it all the time and then you just go in there and render it in your style next one we have stitches and this is when you have for example some outfit and you want to 
draw some stitches on that outfit with like a leather bag for example it creates some basic stitches like that that's all very specific but very helpful when you need it one more I've made like a stitches in line this is helpful when you want to have like a Frankenstein character I think you can just add this stuff easy Frankenstein I should have called it easy Frankenstein or when you want to have like a dress from pieces of different clothes you can just draw it easily and then fill it with color yeah just like that very easy it's especially good if you have a line art in your drawing style and the last one but not least is the fur so let's create some brown background so for example this is like some animal you need to draw or like a fur coat for your character this is the base color you take a bit of like darker color and draw with it in one direction then you take the lighter color than the base maybe a bit more even saturated in one direction so you could see the previous layers and with very light color yeah maybe adding some darker color on top again and then on top of that i would take a big soft brush and create the shadows in the areas I need shadows yeah here you have your beautiful fur from far it looks I think amazing for the big fur coats this will be perfect and the, for the big animals and that's actually all these are all the brushes I use right now I'm working on more brushes with more hair options and like flowers and everything but they are far from being ready so uh, maybe later you can find these brushes on my Patreon or Deviantart. Maybe I will put them somewhere else, who knows. But right now they're there. So yeah, that's all. I'm gonna leave the link to the brushes in the comments and the description. Hope you'll find this video helpful. I've been trying to make it as informative as I could. And also, if you want to support me to do more of this kind of content and also to get an access to all of my poses, references and step-by-step -step tutorials, consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you so much for watching, have an awesome day and I'll see you soon. Bye!